Good afternoon everyone. Today we would like to present a brief drama on The Cop and the Anthem by O. Henry. Hope you all will enjoy it. Scene 1. Soapy is sitting on a bench in a park. He is moving up and down as it is very cold. He rubs his hands vigorously. What to do? Oh, what to do? What to do? Oh, what to do? Goes back to the bench, sits on it, screams and gets up. Too cold. Too cold. Where will I go? What should I do? It's too cold. There are so many like him, homeless, hungry and shivering. They are roaming in the park. To beat the cold, he starts to jump vigorously. Seeing him, the others to start jumping. They break into a dance. As he is moving thus, a passerby is seen. Soapy runs towards him and grabs his warm coat. The man screams and pulls his coat and away. Leave my God alone! Soapy tries to spread a few newspapers on the bench and tries to lie down. Howls and gets up. Stupid cold, stupid winter. Poor me. How will I spend this three months of severe cold? If this goes on, I am sure there won't be Sobe alive, but Sobe will become freezy, and I will lie dead like a stone on this bench, and nobody to care, care about me. I won't be making any difference to the world. A few what people you at? look at hit him curiously as they walk past. They come towards him and scares him away. He walks up and down, leaves fall on him to indicate winter. He tries to come up with a brilliant idea. Idea! He comes Why didn't up with I come a brilliant up with idea. idea before? It's all right. It's thought now. He waits for someone to show up. He waits impatiently. Nobody turns up. He gets up and decides to go away from the park into the street. He rubs his hands to keep himself warm. Scene 2. A lady walks up the street. She has got beautiful fat purse with her. He runs towards her and plucks the purse from her and stands there in front of her. Come on, give me a purse. Yeah, yeah, be a good boy. Come on, go on, call the police. The lady looks at him. She thinks he's a mad man and coaxes him to give back the purse. Soapy moves here and there with the purse. He does not try to run away. He chases the lady with the purse, shifting the purse from one hand to the other. She tries hard to get the purse. I'm going to scream now, shall I? Go on, scream. Suddenly, the lady gives one kung fu shot to Soapy. He falls flat get on up. the ground. Try me, I'm a kung fu master. Take my purse, are you? Take this. Soapy almost faints. He groans in pain. It looked like Soapy was unconscious, but there's movement. Uh, he gets up very slowly, holds uh, every part of his body, groans while getting up. Uh, oh, my God, what a lady. Nowadays, God has made women very really strong. I should pick on the man next. Right. He sees a boy with a dog. The dog was bigger than the boy. Soapy tries to irritate the boy. He pulled the boy's ears. As he did so, he kept himself away from the dog. The dog looked ferocious, menacing. Sobi did not want to be bitten by a dog, but he was too desperate to fulfill his brilliant idea. He tried again. This time, he poked the dog. The dog simply looked at him without any response. Sobi barked at him. Come on! How? How? But the dog did not respond. The boy just stared at him. Are you blind? Can't you see me? I'm irritating you. Get irritated. Come on, complain. Get me arrested. Come on. Soapy in a boxing position. You are the big one, aren't you? Yes, yes, yes I am. I love your Tom baggy pants. They're hardly fitting you. Will you give them to me? They're in fashion nowadays. That's the only pants I have. Thank you, going. I'm not irritated at all. If you don't go, I'll let loose my dog. It will eat you up and then I can get your baggy pants. Want to try? Ha! <laughs> I don't believe you. Come on, burger, tell him about. The dog leaps towards Soapy. Soapy scoots. 
They run around. So Get it out of I don't want to be a donkey behind. G. Go! Shoot! It's not working. Aha, I see. Let me try this. He saw a beautiful and expensive hotel in front of him. He said to himself, I'll go to the restaurant, order the best of the food, eat to my fill, and when they ask me to pay up, I'll say I have no money, and then the cops will call, and I'll be arrested. My life is set for the next three months in jail. I will have an armed bed and foods to eat. Great idea! Dances wildly. People join him in the road. He tries to enter the hotel, he is stopped by the guard. Hey mister, where do you think you are going? Hi guard, I'm Sophie, can you see I come in to have food? How oh, is it? How do I look to you? Like Maharaja. No, I mean like a fool or something? Not at all. Good, now, what would you like, a cake or? Food, I come in to have Sinto's food, now move away. The guard lifts him up and throws Get him into the beggar. street. This is no place for you. Can't you see the gentry? People sitting inside are rich people. Look at them! Sopi looks inside. People are enjoying singing and dancing. Sopi runs in the, inside the restaurant, joins the dance. The guard runs after him. Sopi resists. People hold him and, thro and throws him out of the restaurant. Call the police, call the police, let him arrest me, call the police. Everybody laughs at him. Go away you fool, before you really get arrested. Scene 4. Soapy is seen sleeping under the park bench. He seems to be half unconscious. He is hungry and cold. He sees a dream as if he's a, as if he's with a princess, dancing, eating and enjoying away. There are many people enjoying with him. Everybody seems to enjoy the party. Suddenly... Get up, you fool! Get up! Do you need to grab Get up and go away before I arrest you. Really? Will you arrest me and take me to jail? Please, do it. Arrest me. Come on. Arrest me. Man, get up and get lost. He goes away. Now, Soapy is very angry. He's determined to get arrested. He wants to do something drastic for which he will be taken to jail. He goes to the street, then sees people walking around. People avoid him since he's a beggar and now is smiling at everybody. He then picks up a stone and throws it on a window pane of a beautiful shop. The glass shatters and it starts jumping with joy. I'm cooking it! I'm cooking it! I'm arrested! I'm arrested! People watch him curiously, nevertheless, joins him. Little boy, baby, song. do a leap and make him dance when it come on. Everybody looking for a dance. To the
The shopkeeper is furious. He jumps angrily when others are dancing. He calls the cop on his cell phone. Police arrives. Stop! I say stop! There is silence. Everybody stops dancing. What's going on here? Sir, someone threw the stone on the window pane. Now it's broken. Then why are they dancing? I don't know. That's what I'm angry about. They go on and damage my shop and sing and dance about it. Who is the culprit? Who did this? The police looks at him doubtfully. What is this? Come on, arrest me. Put me in jail. What are you doing? The police did not believe him, for who would owe up his fault? The police you. started concentrating on others. As the police approached them, Maybe they not. disposed quickly. It's you. Again, Soapy's plan failed. As he was walking sadly, he saw a woman standing alone in the street. He thought of teasing her so that he would be arrested. She went near her and tried to act like a hero. He tried to attract her attention. She too looked at him aquariously, as if interested. Both saw a policeman round the corner of the street. Soapy was sure the lady would scream and he would be arrested. Life is sorted. But wait what? The, the lady walked up to him, put her arms round his arm and smiled at him. Soapy was frightened. She acted as if she knew Soapy. Both walked down the street for some time. Soapy, seeking an opportunity, disarmed his hand and ran away from the place. Scene 5. Soapy again is seen on the roads. All his mission of getting arrested failed. People are walking on the road. Soapy, deep in thought, what to do, what to do next? Suddenly, he started behaving like a drunk. He screamed and danced on the road, impersonating a drunk. Hi, I'm Sophie. Look at me. People laughed at him. Some stood, clapped and encouraged him. The policeman came and shooed away everyone and chased Soapy away from that place. He thought he would give another when he saw a man with an umbrella standing outside a shop. Oh, give him my umbrella! Come on, call the police! Call the police! Get the filthy hair out of my umbrella! Go, the fast, call the police! Oh my god! The man pulled the umbrella towards him and ran for his life. Soapy was so frustrated that he threw the umbrella far away. Scene 6 A lonely road. He saw a church full of beautiful lights. Soft music was coming from him. The anthem was sweet and heartwarming and peaceful. Time is short. He baked into the church and what is your life? It's even a vapor that appear it for a little time and then vanish it away. Suddenly, there was a transformation. If I told so, if someone had told me when I was 20 years old earlier, that life was very short and would pass just like that, he decided he would, would find work believe. the next day. And if I tell you that, you don't believe it either. I cannot get young people to understand how great life is. Someone how quickly it passes. He dances. Hey, what are you doing here? Nothing. You think I believe that? Soapy started arguing with the policeman. Come on, police, what you doing? Leave Sophie alone. Now, we know that policemen do not like argued with. Come along. No, 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 leave me alone. 
I don't want to go to jail. I want to work. So he's a good man now. He's a decent man now. I know how decent you are. People like you deserve only jail. He was sticking to the judge. Order, order, order. Who is the culprit? Three months jail. <laughs> there are many possible morals of the story Cop and the Anthem by O. Henry. O. Henry's short stories are very interesting, but each story has at least one moral. It is not clearly expressed and it is up to the readers to understand the morals. In case of this story, the possible morals are, first, every individual has hopes and dreams. Sopi is a homeless individual, but even he has a goal. Initially, his goal was to get arrested and stay warm in the chill during the winters. However, later his goal changed and he decided to do something worthwhile in life. Second, small experiences can cause big changes. The simple act of paying attention to the anthem that was being played in the church made Sobi think back of the nicer times in his life. The anthem brought about a sudden and a wonderful change in him and he decided to take control of his life. Thus, the anthem made Sobi take a complete U-turn. Third, Life is unpredictable. Just when Sopi had made up his mind to get a job and lead a respectful life, a cop arrested him for loitering around. This was not what Sopi wanted. Earlier in the story, when Sopi had desperately tried to get arrested and tried all sorts of tricks, no one bothered about him. And later, when he did not want to get arrested, he unfortunately did. This only shows that life does not go as we plan and is extremely unpredictable. I repeat, life does not go as we plan and is extremely unpredictable. With this, I would now like to conclude our drama on The Crops and the Anthem by O. Henry with expressing our special thanks of gratitude towards our school principal, Mr. Pasan Thundup, Vice Principal, Mrs. Srinyanki, and Headmaster, Mr. Rindawa, who gave us this golden opportunity to perform, practice, and learn. I would also like to thank each and every members of our drama club who worked hard enough in this short period of time with all the hustle and gave their best today. And also our English teacher, Mam Tenzin Shenzom, Mam Tashtoma, Mam Tsring Yudin, whose help, guidance and practice made the day possible. Finally, I would like to call all the participants on the stage. Please come on the stage. On behalf of everyone here, I apologize if there was any mistake. Hope you all enjoyed and had fun watching this drama and us. Once again, thank you for all your beautiful cooperation. Thank you and have a nice day, everybody.